Good day, everybody. Welcome to the Bible in a Year 2021. We are currently on day 345, and we're finishing off Romans, reading Romans 14, 15, and 16 today. And I'm not going to get past verse 1 of Romans 14. Yeah, because, you know, this whole year we've been focusing on relationships. And... Um, the Spirit just wants us to really take note of relationships, how important they are to Father, and how we are, you know, in this transformed life as we were dealing with it yesterday. Um, we're, we are supposed to be different. We're supposed to be different than we used to be. We're supposed to be different than the world. Because the whole reason Jesus went to the cross uh, was so that we could be adopted and brought into the kingdom to experience Father, to know his heart, to live according to his heart and not according to our selfish desires. Uh, but we, we have to, it's, it's, not a, it's not a magic wand uh, to make us do these things. It still has to be our desire to want to do these things. We have to desire to change. We have to desire to be who Father desires us to be. We have to desire His heart. That has to be, uh, the desire of our heart has to be Him. And and it's there. He, he's done the transformation. We are now have this capacity. We have the capacity of, of growth, spiritual growth. We have the capacity of this transformation. We have this capacity to see all these things happen in our lives. But we have to desire it. Because he's not going to force it on us. And so the very first verse of, of chapter 14. Welcome the person who is weak in faith. I'll explain that in a moment. But not in order to argue about differences of opinion. Paul gives us a, 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 an example here. One person believes in eating everything while the weak person eats only vegetables. Now, what does Paul mean by weak faith? It means immature faith. That's what he's talking about. He's not talking about a lack of faith. That's, that's a, a different thing entirely. It means a person who is immature, young in their faith. Just the beginning. Uh, hasn't learned a, a lot of things. Ha hasn't got to that place. Is still perhaps reliant on... Um, a type of law structure and hasn't come into a, a fuller understanding of what grace looks like. I, I say that only because of the example that he gives. Um, you know, uh, the person of a, uh, a, a of a weak faith eats only vegetables. Now, that's not taking. That's not going against anybody who's desired decided for whatever reason uh, to be a vegan. Uh, you, you're not doing that because uh, God commanded it. You're doing that because of, of health things. Maybe it's a concern for the environment. That's not what we're talking about. Uh, but there were laws in place about diet, about all, all kinds of things that in the age of grace, um, we, we were to chase after Father's heart and not after the law and following after Father's heart. We would always do what's right because he, he, he sets that example for us. And that's what we're talking about. But the, the thing here is uh, about making room for that in the church, making room for people um, who who are at the beginning stages of growth, uh, making room for people. And we're not even talking knowledge necessarily here. Um, somebody could come in with a lot of knowledge of the Bible about where they are in the maturity in faith, in that relationship with Jesus, might just be at that beginning place. And um, I know I've been there. It's in, and when people show you that grace, it's, it's an amazing thing. When people, um, uh, uh, just allow the spirit to work in your growth, instead of you sitting down and, and you, you're, you've got your volumes of instruction, how you're going to instruct this new, new Christian or immature Christian in these things, instead of giving them a safe environment, instead of giving them that safe place where you're going to love them 
You're going to protect them. You're going to pray for them. You're going to lift them up. You're going to encourage them. Encourage them in the scripture. Uh, it's amazing. The more you get into the word, how the Holy Spirit uses that to bring that revelation, that growth and everything else. The thing is here, we're not, we're not supposed to allow differences of opinion differences of, of maturity um, to cause division. There's never any excuse for division. Never, ever, ever any excuse for division. We are never to bring division into the body. Ever. Ever, ever. That's a no-no. And and uh, th there's, no, there's no light switch. Uh, it, it doesn't work that way. You don't walk into the church and suddenly become a perfect person. We're, we're all in different places in this journey with Christ. And we need to make those uh, allowances in that room, in that place. Um, yeah, church is supposed to be a safe place. A messy place, but a safe place. And, and yeah, that's where we should be. Yeah, I think you guys know my heart on this. So I'm just going to leave that with you. You can digest that with the Holy Spirit and, and that whole chapter. And you guys be blessed. And we're back to Acts tomorrow.